midnight dreary. The neighborhood was normally a quiet and peaceful place, but lately, there had been something strange happening. People had reported seeing a tall skinny figure lurking around the streets at night. It was as tall as a house and had long spindly arms that seemed to stretch out into the darkness. No one knew what the figure was or where it had come from, but everyone was afraid of it. Parents warned their children not to go out after dark, and people stayed locked inside their homes once the sun had set. But one night, a group of teenagers decided to investigate. They armed themselves with flashlights and baseball bats, and they set out into the darkness. The streets were deserted, and there was no sign of the shadowy figure. But as they turned a corner, they saw it. The figure was standing in the middle of the street, its long arms stretching out as if it was reaching into the night itself. The teenagers were confused and frightened. What was this thing? Was it a ghost? A demon? Something else entirely? They decided to follow the figure, to see where it went and what it was doing. They crept behind it, staying out of sight. As they followed it, they noticed something strange. The figure wasn't just wandering aimlessly. It seemed to be searching for something. It would pause at certain houses, as if it was looking for someone specific. The teenagers watched as the figure disappeared into one of the houses. They waited for a few minutes, then cautiously approached the house. Inside, they found an old woman. She was sitting in a rocking chair, staring off into space. They tapped on the window and startled her. They asked her if she knew anything about the shadowy figure, she nodded slowly. I've seen it, she said. It's been coming around here for years. I don't know what it wants, but it's looking for something. The teenagers were confused. What could the figure be looking for? And why was it so important? They decided to investigate further. They spent the next few nights following the figure, trying to determine what it was doing. They watched as it searched through garbage cans, peered into windows, and even climbed onto rooftops. As they discussed the possibilities of what it could be looking for, the teenagers stood frozen in fear as the shadowy figure seemed to come out of nowhere and towered over them. Its long, thin limbs stretched out, reaching for them like tendrils from a nightmare. What is that thing, one of them whispered. I don't know, another replied. But we have to do something. The figure had been stalking the neighborhood for weeks, appearing at night and disappearing before anyone could get a good look at it. But now it was here, right in front of them. They could see that the figure was made of some kind of dark, inky substance, almost like a living shadow. It had no eyes or other facial features, just smooth like a star stone. How could it see? Suddenly, the figure lunged forward, its arms swinging wildly. The teenagers scrambled to get away, but one of them was caught by the figure's long fingers and lifted into the air. The others watched in horror as the figure seemed to absorb their friend into its dark mass. They could hear his screams, muffled and distant, as if he were being swallowed up by the darkness itself. Their friend was dead. How would they explain this to his parents? He was just, gone. They knew they had to act fast. They couldn't let the shadowy figure continue to terrorize their neighborhood. They banded together, determined to find a way to stop it. They did their research, poring over books on mythology and ancient folklore. They scoured the internet, searching for any clue that could help them understand what they were dealing with. Finally, they found what they were looking for. A legend about a creature called the Shadow Walker, a being made of pure darkness that preyed on the souls of the living. According to the legend, the only way to defeat the Shadow Walker was to lure it into the light. The creature couldn't survive in bright, open spaces, and it would be weakened by exposure to sunlight. The teenagers came up with a plan. They would lure the Shadow Walker into a nearby park, 
where they would set up a series of bright lights and powerful floodlights. They would corner the creature there, and then use their makeshift weapons to drive it back into the light. It was risky, but they knew it was their only chance. They put their plan into action, and soon the Shadow Walker was trapped in the park, surrounded by blinding light. The teenagers fought bravely, using whatever they could find as weapons. They swung baseball bats and metal pipes, hitting the creature with all their strength. The Shadow Walker thrashed and flailed, knocking over and breaking as many lights as it could, but it was no match for their wits and determination. Finally, with one last burst of strength, the creature let out a piercing shriek and dissipated into thin air. The darkness that had been surrounding them disappeared, and the park was filled with only the stark white floodlight. And no trace of their absorbed friend. The teenagers stood there, panting and sweating, surrounded by the wreckage of their battle. They knew that they had saved their neighborhood from a terrifying threat. They would never forget the shadowy figure that had once stalked their streets.